Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching y'all how to use FL Studio. So it's gonna be a beginner's tutorial. It's intended for those who have just recently purchased the software. Um, I'm gonna be going over the bare essentials of what you need to make beats. So uh, let's hop right in and get to it. So when you first open up FL Studio, this is what you're likely to see. And within FL Studio, there's four main pages that you wanna become familiar with. They all kind of work together. So we're gonna go over each of them uh, individually. And so the first one that we're gonna do is the channel rack. So right here in the middle of the screen is the channel rack. Um, you can see me moving it around. This is where you're going to build the foundation of your beat at. So the channel rack is where you load different sounds and build a loop for that sound. Now they already have a kick, a clap, a hat, and a snare um loaded in here for you and these are just stock sounds but if you want to use your own sounds um, i'll show you here in a second how to load those but for for this tutorial i'm just gonna really quickly i'm gonna build like a beat real quick a little loop so um, all you have to do is just click in these little boxes and you can have the uh, metronome on up here so you know what it sounds like So you can see right here, um, I created just like a really simple drum loop. And if you ever, you know, click on something you want to delete it, all you do is right click on that note. So for the hi-hat, you could click them all in like this. But what I like to do is right click, fill each two steps. So I can right click on the snare and click delete. And that does away with that channel. So if you want to load your own sounds that you've downloaded, um, you just go up here to options, file settings, and you click on this folder right here and you find wherever on your computer you've saved it. Me personally, I have this uh, folder called drum kits where I save all my drum kits that I download and I have them all in one in one folder. So this basically creates a file path for FL Studio to load. Once you're done doing that, it pops up over here on the left side, drum kits, and these are all my drum kits. So let's just say I wanted to load like a kick drum and a snare drum. I could go over here to the 808 Mafia drum kit. I could go to kicks and here's all the kicks in this little folder. Um, and then I can just click and drag it over onto the existing uh, kick that is already loaded. So I can replace that sound. So that's how you kind of experiment with the sound. So I could drag this sound over and it just replaces it, but it keeps the pattern that I already have built. Um, loaded so it's pretty useful when you're trying to cycle through which sound you want to use you can just go ahead and build the uh, pattern and then you can uh, kind of drag and drop different sounds in there so I'm gonna replace this clap with uh, another snare that I like or another clap that I like uh, I like that one right there and right here is where you can uh, change the tempo of the beat so I can drag it up and down up here in the top left so I can, I'm gonna put it at 140 right there. Now, if you want to uh, add like a synthesizer or a piano, guitar, bass, what you can do is you can click on this arrow right here at the top left of the channel rack. You can say add one, you can hover over it, and then you can kind of explore some of the sounds that they already have uh, loaded into FL Studio. Um, a good one that they have is called Flex. It's very new that they just released, um, and it has some good sounds. So I could go to one of their libraries and find 12-string guitar. So now this 12-string guitar sound is loaded into the channel rack. But I don't really have the flexibility of creating uh, a loop or because I have no ability to build chords within this channel rack sequence right here. So what I need to do is I need to open up the piano roll. So I can select each channel. So if I select this 12 string guitar channel and then I come up here, this right here is the piano roll. So I can click the piano roll and it, this is where I can kind of build the loop for anything that's very musical and you wanna build chords or change notes. All you really do is just left click and, and you, can, uh, you can extend the length or shorten the length of each note. So I'm gonna draw on something real quick, show you how it's done. So down here is the uh, velocities. This controls how hard each note is hit. So it kind of simulates you on a piano or on a MIDI keyboard. Um, you can lower the, how hard it was hit right here with um, dragging this up and down. You can shorten each note like this. Um, up here is like the toolbar. Um, I really only use this uh, draw, draw tool. And I also use, sometimes I'll use this uh, slice tool right here to slice the note like that and it creates two notes but I don't really use the slice really all I use is this draw tool 
right here is the select tool. So if you want to like copy and paste something, say you wanted to like copy this, you can just drag and select these notes and then you can uh, hit control C and that copies it and then control V paste it. See how it pasted that whole little section right there. And then you could like drag it over here. Um, so you have, you really have the freedom to do anything you want in the piano roll. Um, but just get familiar, come out here and test out, uh, you know, building some notes and you can also just plug in your MIDI keyboard and play whatever loop you want to do. If you're, if you're pretty good at keys, um, and all you would do right there, if, once your keyboard's set up, uh, you just hit this red button up here and then you press play, uh, and it'll record the notes that you're hitting on your MIDI core keyboard. So you have two options to build loops there. So now that we have, um, built some loops, let's go ahead and kind of create um, and arrange our beat. So this right here is the playlist and this is where you're going to arrange the beat. So you basically build the loops right here in the channel rack and you arrange them here in the playlist. So you come up here to pattern, you say split by channel and over here to the left is where each individual sound is. So I have control over the kick, the clap, the hi-hat, and the 12 string guitar and then you can kind of arrange your your beat so if i want the hi-hats to not be there at the beginning you know you can drag drag it over so let's just arrange a little bit uh and see and now you you get the picture you can you really have uh control over <clears throat> what what sounds come in and out right here in the playlist and this is where your actual song is going to be this is what's going to be exported is this this playlist right here. So whatever you put down, um, whatever arrangement you create is that's what you're going to be able to export. It's going to export from this. Since I went ahead and split each of these patterns, you can come up here and scroll and change which pattern you're viewing in the channel rack. So each sound now has its own pattern that it's associated with. Um, and up here next to the play button, you can see it's pattern is highlighted and then there's song. So pattern, when you press play, it's going to play from the channel rack but if you press song it's going to play the actual arrangement so <clears throat> we'll i'm going to press play right here So that's pretty much the playlist um, and it, it also has a toolbar up here associated with it um, kind of just take some time to go through like I said I don't use a lot of these tools honestly I just use the draw tool the select tool and the slice tool so this is the mixer and as you can see like I have the kick drum going to channel one I have the clap going to channel two the hi-hat going to channel three and I have the 12 string guitar going to channel four so the mixer is where you're going to balance out the set, the level, the, the loudness of each sound. So you can use that. You can adjust those by using this fader. Um, you can adjust the panning with this knob right here. So if I go left, I'm going to pan it more towards the left speaker. If I go right, it's going to go more towards the right speaker. Um, I have this mute button. So when I'm mixing, if I want to listen to an individual sound, I can mute all the other ones and just, you know, hone in on that one sound while I'm mixing it. Um, over here on the right, so each channel has uh, an insert slot. So let's say I wanted to add some distortion. I could come over here to slot one and just click slot one and go to distortion. And I could load one of these plugins. And these plugins are where you kind of can get creative with your mixing. You can add different effects, uh, reverbs, delays, stuff like that. Just play around with some of the effects um, over here, you know, adding some effects and uh, kind of adjusting your volumes of each sounds until you get a good balanced mix. Um, all these other uh, buttons I wouldn't worry about too much. Um, I'll kind of go over the mixer more in depth in a different video. All right, guys, so just to recap, you have the channel rack where you can, you know, load your individual sounds at. You have um, your piano roll where you can build chords and musical loops. Um, you have the mixer where you control the levels, the effects of each sound, and you have the playlist where you arrange the beat at. I, obviously, I didn't go over every single little button in FL Studio. Um, I didn't want to confuse y'all, but I really just wanted to give y'all a solid foundation and, and understand you know, how the, the four pages within FL Studio work together. Um, I just really encourage y'all to do some experimentation, click around. If you hover over um, any button in FL Studio, if you look at the top left of the screen up here, 
it'll show you a description of what that button does. So like right here, let's say I'm hovering over the metronome. See how it says metronome. Um, right here, I'm hovering over the countdown. It says countdown before recording. So I encourage y'all to just kind of go over, hover over each little button if you're confused and you, and you don't really know uh, what, what the function of that button is or what that page is. It'll show you um, what exactly it is. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. I know I didn't go over a lot, but I just wanted to keep things simple and uh, kind of get you headed in the right direction. If you have any questions, please leave a comment um, and I'll try my best to get a quick response. Um, thank you for watching the video. Much love.